season and my season of divine settlement has come where divine speed will be the order of the day divine shortcuts will be the order of the day i know that god has planned great things for you jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 and you need to respond accurately to do the plans of god because when we are talking about the mystery of prompt response. You either respond to God or you respond to Satan or you respond to the whims and caprices of men. It is your choice. Life is a choice. And the choice you make today makes you tomorrow. We are all products of choices. We have dealt this in the first part. And you must know that you must own up your experiences until you begin to own up your experiences and become real then you definitely can make it that's why proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 he say he that covereth his sin shall not prosper so you make mistake you're covering it you see you're covering it pretending as if it does not exist it exists you are living in denial and the more you live in denial the more you deny yourself of the positive side of life he say he that covereth his sins shall not prosper and it's not wise but he that confess it confession means being real owning it up and not passing the box to another being that this is my choice i did it and i need to own it up and then i need to make a decision to stop it he that confesses his sin and forsaketh it shall obtain mercy from god and I pray that the great mercies of Jehovah, that your scattered life shall be gathered together in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. So the negative response or positive response, when we are responding to God, that is positive. And when we are responding to Satan and to men, that's negative. Because when you respond to God, you commit the integrity of God and you get the results. And the products of God you get the manifestations of God and it has to be prompt because when you delay delay is always dangerous but the worst thing is that people respond to Satan faster to men faster and look at what is happening today a lot of girls who spend time to dress up only to come out naked I mean is it not abysmal Spend time to dress up and you come out naked. At the end of the day, no bra. At the end of the day, you're exposing your breast. At the end of the day, you're exposing your tummy. You're exposing your, your, your buttocks. Why? It is to release the spirit of seduction upon men. And unfortunately, some men have prompt response to that. And they bastardize their destinies. They have revival in their penis because of that. That you have revival in your penis is not a sin. But to follow the direction of that revival is a sin. That is responding to that. That's what destroys men. And a lot of men have taken decisions based on their immoral relationships. Manipulations of darkness. And this must end. You must make up your mind and say, I must not continue with this. You must stay in a place that you have fellowship regularly with God, not with Satan. And that with God will put some things into you that will drive into having fellowship with men. Beloved, I want you to take note of this. The whole earth is full of wickedness. You must not be a victim of wickedness. First John chapter 5, verse 19. And Psalm chapter 74, verse 20. He said, have respect unto your covenant, O God, 
for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty what are they trying to do to make you respond to wrong things and then you get wrong results and most of the times you're stagnated in life you decay and most of the times your life is gone you have people that are giving a, a wrong prompt response to the issues of money their love of money is driving them into kidnapping is driving them into armed robbery and at the end of the day they are caught and their life is cut short there is a way that seems right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 and proverbs chapter 16 verse 25 you must not respond to such a thing you must always pray to get the guardians of god that's why the bible says in psalm chapter 19 verse 20 day unto day authorize speech night unto night reveals knowledge why does god speak why does he speak why does he use his creature to speak to us to give us direction so that we can have prompt response to his beatings so that we can commit his integrity because life is a choice isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 if you be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land if you can respond to god positively then the goodies of god the goodies of the land will be accessible by you and that is the way it works job chapter 36 verse 11 says if you obey him if remains your choice it is a when if you obey him and serve him then you have committed his integrity he will not make sure you spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure ha ah, pleasure free prosperity prosperity without sorrow proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 he said the blessing of the lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it sorrow free when you respond promptly to god that is the way it works and i pray you will give god quick response and not the devil look at abraham for example genesis chapter 12 verse 1 leave your father's house genesis chapter 2 and 3 he left prompt obedience genesis chapter 17 immediately god spoke circumcised immediately he started with himself and circumcised there was nothing like the darling thinking should i do or should i not do he just dived into it and that is prompt response and that's why abraham was getting the results even when he was making mistakes even when he had to lie in genesis chapter 22 sacrifice your son the one you love your only son isaac genesis chapter 22 verse 1 ah early in the morning he arose without consulting the wife sarah prompt response took isaac took some of his servants took wood took fire left to sacrifice isaac no consultations hey the miracle that took him years god said give it to me prompt response prompt response towards god commits integrity and then you will not get prompt response of heaven that's the way it works when you make heaven to laugh heaven will make you to laugh beloved understand that but the most dangerous is the devil and the wicked people that are cluttering all over the earth beloved look at what ezekiel chapter 8 says prophet ezekiel said then said he unto me god speaking to prophet ezekiel son of man lift up thy eyes now the way towards the south so i lifted up my eyes the way towards the north and behold not what at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry he said i opened my eyes as he said i lift up my eyes in the spirit and i looked and i saw the image of jealousy in the entry Come, we are talking about the gate of the altar the altar is where people's life are altered positively or negatively 
he said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, but tell thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Beloved, there are mysteries. There is a hole in the wall. I remember one time after ministrations, and I said to some people, when you get home, put your hands on the wall. Just pray in the spirit, excuse me. And pray in the spirit. Don't stop. And great testimony. Some people say for the first time, they knew they were living with people in the same place. As they put their hands on the wall and began to pray in the spirit. After 30 minutes, going to 40, 45 minutes, they began to hear sounds like people wanting to do running away, running away, running away from that environment, from the house. And they knew that the heaviness they've been getting and all manners of rubbish had been that some powers have been cohabiting with them. Beloved, fresh fire is it. The enemy cannot stand it. You release it through praying in the spirit, spirit to spirit communication, praying in the language of the spirit. So understand it. Fasting and prayer, no substitute if you need fresh fire. No substitutes. Beloved, look at this. He said, yeah, you see it as a wall, just a small hole. And he said, dig. Dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold the door. There was a door right in the wall. So inside the wall, you see it as a normal wall. But it has another settlement of lives. Things were going on in the wall. Witchcraft covens. They establish witchcraft covens anywhere. Anywhere. Now listen. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do there. So I went in and saw, and behold every form of creeping things, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the world around about. And there stood, and I pray today, that if any power is inhabiting the walls of your house by the finger of God let the fire of God locate them and burn them to ashes in the name of Jesus that's why we do what we call blood of the sprinkling in houses as it's in Hebrew chapter 11 and 12 the blood of the sprinkles drives away it's, it's a part of the mystery so environmental sanitation drives away the destroyer from the environment most people have powers living with them in their houses and they don't understand sometimes they don't feel like going back to the house sometimes they are weak sometimes they come back to the house they sleep they wake up weak sometimes they come back to the house that's when this aggravation will come upon them and they talk to people anyhow they quarrel with their spouses quarrel with the children why because evil influence has taken over such environment and I pray today there is an evil influence in your house by the finger of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command them to clear away and never to return in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. I pray for you. You shall not make unpardonable mistakes. And here again he says, And there stood before them, verse 11, 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Can you see 70 of the ancients, those that are supposed to be respected, that are supposed to be leaders in the temple, in the church, that are supposed to be counselors, but these men are witches and wizards. These people are, witch, are wizards. They are inside the world. That is their they are coven, they are having meetings there, and they devise mischief, give wicked counsels. So when they come and devise it, people will be taking wrong decisions, having wrong, wrong prompt responses to issues of life. 
and as far as they do that they'll be out of the way and then they'll be destroyed their own is to stay there and take witchcraft decisions they take witchcraft judgments and right there they control the events that happen in the city or in that environment and i pray today that any coven of darkness assigned or that will be assigned against you against your destiny against your marriage your home your family against your career against your academic pursuits against your children against your environment i command them to die now in the name of jesus according to exodus chapter 22 verse 18 he says suffer not in which to live so i decree that you shall not be a cheap victim in the hands of these covens again in jesus name and he says and these are the men you see physically you trust them he said they are the elders the big people in the church and yet they are wizards so when they give you counsel you don't know they're giving you counsel so that you can take a negative response and destroy your good relationships i pray that that will come to an end and he says in verse 12 in verse 16 he says uh, it says, uh, let me conclude the verse 11. He said, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. What is the incense going on? What is the thick cloud going up? To confuse people, to make them take the wrong terms in life. Wicked, wicked responses to aggravate anger and seduction in the lives of men, pushing them wrongly. That must come to an end today. Anything pushing you when God is not pushing you, I command those things to die right now in the matchless name of Jesus. And he continues to say, verse 12, Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients, the ancients here means elders of the house of Israel, do in the dark? That's why Psalm 74 verse 20 says, Have respect unto your covenant, O God. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Have you seen what they do in the dark? They bring out cruelty. They mislead people to take wrong decisions, give them wrong counsel. They bring out mischief. And at the end of the day, people are having rapid response. People are having prompt response, but in the negative way. Destroying people, destroying themselves, destroying governments, destroying corporate bodies, destroying marriages, destroying children. And children are turned against their parents. I pray that any power that is out to use your children to punish you comes down for you today in jesus name now he says every man in his own chambers of his imagery for they say the lord does not see us the lord has forsaken the earth can you see that let me show you in chapter 11 and he says again chapter 11 verse 1 moreover the spirit lifted me up and brought me into the east gate of the lost house which look at eastward this is talking about the lost house the east gate of the lost house can you imagine these witches and wizards drawing up their their covens destroying lives in the church places where people go for refuge bastardizing the church and that is what is happening now i pray you will never be deceived May the discernment of spirit begin to walk in you that not every man you see in the church has faith. Not everyone that is carrying a title is of God. He said, they call me Lord, Lord, and I'll tell them I never knew you. That is the way it works. Now look at that. In the east gate of the lost house, which look at eastward, and behold, at the door of the gate, five and twenty men, twenty-five men, among whom I saw Jezaniah. Do you remember the Jezaniah we saw in chapter 8 again? He belonged to different witchcraft covens. Among whom is with, uh, I saw Jezaniah, the son of Azor, and Pelatiah, the son of Beniah, princes of the people. These are high people that people depend on. They lead people wrongly to take wrong decisions and have rapid responses to some issues of life and destroy themselves. They will not lead people the correct way. Because in the multitude of good counsel, there is safety. But in the multitude of bad counsel, there is destruction. 
So you, 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 you get it. Look at them. What do they do? Verse 2. He said, Then said he unto me, Son of man, These are the men that devise mischief. So their product there is mischief. Nothing else. Nothing good comes from any covenant. For anyone. And give wicked counsel in this city. These are trusted people, princes, the big people in the church that counsel people. But they lead people to wrong counsel. And wrong counsel will lead you to prompt negative prompt action. And negative prompt response will lead you to destruction. Destroying your relationships, destroying good things about you. I remember the story I had of this young man who found the love of his life in UK and they decided to marry that day. Their wedding is supposed to be that day or the next. And then he now remember that, that I had two good friends. I, I should invite them over for a tea to let them know I want to get married. And he called them and they came. And while they, he was there getting tea and some things for them to take, suddenly uh, he gave them his uh, photographic album to watch. That is album of photos. And the, the, the one of them saw the girl there and said, Ah, oh, this girl I finished her life when we were at the University of Ife. So she's in London now. Ah, this girl, she's Donatus. She was sleeping with anybody who was ready to sleep with any girl while we were in school. So that man he didn't have many uh, photos in his album of, of ladies. And he now came out to say, who is that? And he pointed to the girl. So he didn't want to introduce again that this is the person he wanted to wed that day or the next day. They had already booked for it. He just kept quiet. But the brother, what that cost, that uh, wicked counsel, that mischief, got to the man. He counseled that wedding, called it off, cut off the girl, didn't want to hear to the other story. That girl could have done that many years back. Where is the place of repentance? She could have repented. And this guy would have seen some good things in her before he wanted to marry her. But he was now bewitched. Bewitched to see the past, ugly past of that girl. You understand? And he didn't want to hear the other side. And he had a prompt response. A negative prompt response. Canceling the wedding. Canceling everything. Why don't you hear the, her own side? That could have been her life before. There is no man that is perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. The best of a man remains a man. We are all allowing the word of God to sanctify us while we walk into perfection. I pray you will not fall victim to the whims and caprices of men and whims and caprices of the devil. Let me just finish this and we close. This despite the, 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 their work, the product is clear. Look at verse 3 which say it is not near. Let us build houses. This city is the cauldron and we the flesh. So they have turned the city to a cauldron, destroying lives. The slain, the Bible says, was everywhere in the city in verse 6. But something happened. God said to this guy, you have to stop them before they stop you. And they, he says, speak, prophesy against them. If not, they will continue. And it came to pass in verse 13, when I prophesied that Peletiah, the son of Benaiah died, then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, God, will thou make full end of the remnant of Israel? He didn't know that God was depending on him to stop that rubbish. And that's what God sent me today. I pray that any Peletiah, Jezaniah in your life, leading you to wrong responses that has been destroying your profitable relationships, destroying, setting you up for dishonor. I command them to die today in the name of Jesus and be separated from you. Please, when we go to the top part, I will go a little bit deeper uh, on this because it's absolutely important. The mystery of quick response, immediate response, sudden response, the mystery of prompt response is very, very important that you leave the negativity to the positive side with God. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people. It is touching lives positively and serving our God. I am fresh fire. We are missionaries touching people's lives with God. Congratulations. 
you are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.